um, taking from the Delhi case, um, what will happen to the case eventually probably? If uh, doctors, I'm not saying that Savdarjang doctors will do a bad job, but if the doctors do not do a good job of documentation, I'm going to speak only from medical point of view because that is what I can contribute or we, my fraternity can contribute in these issues. So if we do a shoddy job of documentation, then the case falls flat, how much ever brutal it may be, most times. So I, then when these patients come to the hospitals, now um, we have a very large private healthcare system, very, very powerful private healthcare system, where these girls and women, if they go, they, as Madam said, they would want to maintain their confidentiality. They would not probably want uh, mandatory reporting. And also it will be very difficult for those ladies to speak to those doctors because the family might be known to the um, doctor and uh, it will, their uh, issue might be, uh, you know, highlighted or will be brought into open. Most of these times these girls will come to public health care system. Now there, the biggest drawbacks which we have are we uh, somehow happen to violate dignity, um, privacy, confidentiality. It is not uh, one of the topmost uh, agendas. On, on the um, agenda, it's not um, very important for us. Somehow, it happens to be like that. And empathy seems to be missing most times. And though it has, uh, doctors have been doing job of documentation, precision in documentation seems lacking. So what should be done from these points of view is if we have to, if our recommendations have to go into some uh, policy change, it might be in uh, training of doctors where it has to be very, very important aspect of training of doctors to document uh, sexual violence, document um, uh, from uh, forensic point of view, from gynecological point of view, and that it should be an um, integrated teaching. You know, the, the concept of integrated teaching is there in medicine where uh, one particular illness is taught by three, four faculties together to a group of students. So that has to be there. Somehow it is not there on our um, uh, list. It is there in forensic department once, in the second year. It, is, it doesn't seem to be there in gynecology for, in the third year. Now, when most women go to gynecologists, why is it not there on our training list? That is an important thing to um, re-look at. Uh, there would be policy rec recommendations on functioning of hospitals. Somehow public systems seem to be functioning on the uh, principle of you know, incentive, disincentive type of thing. How many of our centers have their own in-house rape crisis centers? Why do we always have to bank upon an NGO to hold our hand to have a rape crisis center or, uh, you know, uh, taking these uh, things further for these uh, victims? Psychological counseling for these women. Many hospitals lack the uh, uh, facility of um, in-house counseling. Um, Many large hospitals also do not have, they have psychiatrists, but they don't have psychologists. They don't require psychiatrists. They require psychologists. So that has to be mandatory. And uh, as far as the functional um, addition to the hospitals, the space for this rape crisis centers, infrastructural facilities and all that, if these are not there, the hospital should receive, uh, and you know, accreditation is there for all uh, institutions now. That has to be an important part of accreditation assessment. If these things are there, then the hospitals will definitely create that space. They will employ psychologists. They will employ they, all the necessary things might be done. Where will the money come from? There is enough in gender budget. Many times this budget is returned uh, unused. If that is corrected, this might be really addressed. Th there is no solid mainstream medical research on um, uh, sexual violence from forensic and gynecology. That seems so. So if that is there, then probably we will be able to help change the definitions and help change since the definitions would be changed, then the definitively uh, whatever legal actions or recommendations or uh, convictions all might change. Um, in conclusion, I feel um, 
you know, the UN has got these two terms in gender studies. They say women in development is slowly maturing towards women, gender and development. Maybe. Now, if we start looking at women and sexual crimes, if we change our perspective and we take it to, because male children also have to be looked at it. And as you said, madam, the perpetrator psychology, the part of criminal psychology, that also has to be looked at and researched so that it can subsequently help in prevention of further things. If we added this term, gender and sexual crimes, if we started looking at it from that point of view, maybe we will be able to throw more light on uh, these issues and maybe we will be able to um, address um, preventive and uh, therapeutic measures in sexual crimes. Thank you.